So we're starting unit two, which is called functions. And we're looking at 2.1, which is function notation today on pages 50 to 56 in your text. Your curriculum outcome today is 30.1 to extend understanding of functions, including algebraic functions, which are polynomial rational power, transcendental functions, which are exponential logarithmic trigonometric and piecewise functions, including absolute value. Lesson objectives, number one, to recall the difference between a relation and a function. Number two, to recall the notation that we use to write functions. Number three, to recall how to evaluate functions. And number four, to recall how to read information from the graph of a function. So recall that a relation is a pairing of events from one set to another set. So for example, you could pair up the scores on your exams based on the unit that it was in and the mark that you got. So maybe it would look like this. On the first exam, you got 65%, second exam, 73, etc., etc., etc. And these, this would be a relation. So two things com uh, being compared. A function is more specific. Each member from the first set is paired with exactly one number from the second set. So, and that makes this uh, example above here is an example of a function, but if you rearranged your data as mark comma unit instead of unit comma mark, it would not be because you would have from your first set, we have two 65s and they both have a different um, second set or a different Y value if you look at it in terms of a point being X comma Y. And that's usually how we look at functions. So if you're given the graph of a relation or a function, this just means that a single x value cannot have more than one y value paired up with it. And we call this the vertical line test. So if we had a function that looked like this, if it was like a simple parabola, the vertical line test tells us that anywhere that we draw a vertical line along this function, only one x value for each y value, it is a function. Whereas something like this, fails the vertical line test. If we draw a vertical line, it crosses more than once. That means that one X value, there's more than one Y value, and that is not a function. All right, the next topic is writing functions. Recall that the way that we write a function is also very important. And we write functions with the notation of F of X or G of X, etc., or H of X or K of X or whatever. And remember that this is not multiplication, even though it looks like it's F times X, it's read as F of X. And really all that it means is that our function which we ha call f, has a variable x in it. And if we were to substitute in another letter or a numerical value into your function, uh, the way we'd write this would change into f of a or f of negative two, et cetera, et cetera. So remember that f of x also, when we say f of x equals x squared, it's really just the same thing as saying y equals x squared, but we're specifically saying that this is a function. So here's our example. It says if f of x equals one minus four x minus x squared, find a f of b. Well, f of b just means normally it's f of x. So instead of x, we're going to put in a b. So that just ends up being one minus four b minus b squared. So not too hard. b, if we're going to find f of negative one, we're just evaluating this function at negative one. So wherever we see an x, we're going to put in a negative one instead. So that turns into one minus four times negative one minus negative one squared. That turns into one plus four. Negative one squared is positive one and this negative outside makes it a negative one again. And that makes it a four. So f of negative one is equal to four. Part C is a little more involving because we're trying to find f of x plus h. So for part C, when we have f of x plus h, we need to plug in an x plus h into those x values. So we get one minus four times x plus h minus x plus h squared. And now we need to expand this whole thing, combine like terms. So we get one minus four x minus four h minus, if we square x plus h, we get x squared plus two x h plus h squared. And then, then there's a negative here. So we get one minus four x minus four h minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared. And we can't combine any of these terms, so that's as good as it gets. And the final one, part D, it says find out what t is if f of t is ne equal to negative 31. So if f of t is equal to negative 31, that means that your function is equal to negative 31, so we can turn this thing into an equation that equals negative 31. And they said it's f of t, so to be um, entirely right, we're going to change these into t's. 
Now we have a quadratic equation. Well, what we need to do here is move everything to the same side and then we can evaluate it. So we get t squared plus 4t if we move it all to the left hand side minus another 1 on this side. That makes it negative 32 equals 0. And we can factor that thing. That's t plus 8 and t minus 4 equals 0. So t is equal to negative 8 and t is equal to positive 4. So graphs of functions and function notation. So graphically, when you're asked to find something like uh, f of negative 2, you really are just finding the height of the graph, which we usually call y. In this case, it's f of x, when the x value is equal to negative 2. So for example, it says use the following graph to find f of 2, and then to find h if f of h is equal to negative 1. So here's our graph. Um, if we're finding f of 2, we just go over to the 2 spot right here, and we go up to where our graph is. And so that means that f of 2 is equal to a height of 3. So that point is just 2 comma 3. And so f of 2, x value, um, 2 is the x value, sorry, f of 2 is the y value, which is 3. And our second one says find h if f of h is equal to negative 1. Well, that right now when they say f of something, they're giving you the height. So the height is at negative 1. Well, there's only one point where the height is negative 1. And that is at a h value of 0. So if f of h is equal to negative 1, then h is equal to 0. So that point that we're talking about is 0, comma, negative 1. So in summary, relations and functions are similar but different things. They both relate two different things to each other. Um, but a function is very specific, though. Each x value can only be paired up with one y value. Every function is also a relation, but every relation is not always a function. And we gave that example of um, whether you're looking at your units, your unit compared to your test score, that is a function. But if you go with test score compared to the unit, it may not be a function. So there's also a specific notation that we work with when we are talking about functions. Remember that we call them like f of x or g of x, etc. And we can evaluate a function by using substitution. So we could just substitute a, a number right in there. So f of 1. Or we could examine a graph of the function to evaluate that function. And finally, your assignment is on page 55. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.